In this video, I will demonstrate an Excel feature called Forecast Sheet, which can automatically produce forecasts using the Halt Winters Additive Seasonal Smoothing Model. The Halt Winters Model is an exponential smoothing approach to estimate the additive linear trend and seasonal effects. It also generates a variety of other outputs that are useful to assess the accuracy of the forecast model that it produces. So here we have a data set of four years of quarterly smartphone sales. So if we review the time series plot of this data, we can see some evidence of an increasing linear trend and a seasonal pattern. So let's plot it out. Just highlight the cells and insert chart. And we're going to use a line chart. And we can add a trend line, a linear trend line. So we can see that um, it has kind of like a seasonal pattern, right? So each year has four quarters. We can see that the second quarter is the lowest sales and the fourth quarter seems to be the highest sales. So it's kind of like uh, people tend to buy more in the winter holidays and it repeats this trend each year. And we can see a linear trend leading up year by year. We can also perform a linear regression between time and sales. So in order to do that, let's insert a column called period because we only have year and each year has four quarters. So we need a period column that's kind of like a ID for each of the quarterly sales. With this, let's see if there's a linear relationship between the time period and the sales. So under data, data analysis, regression. And so for the Y, we have sales. That's our dependent variable and then for the x that's our independent variable which is period and we have labels on the first row and we want it to be output over here and residuals and residual plots click ok so we can see that um, the residuals like kind of evenly distributed along the means of zero which is good and let's see, we have a R square of 50%, which is not too bad. We have um, the PIU of 0 0.002, which is less than 0 0.05, which means that the time period is statistically significant to the sales of the smartphone, meaning that the time period is uh, impactful in this model to kind of predict the sales. So now, how do we use the forecast sheet? This version I have in here is the Excel Mac version. So it doesn't have that functionality under the data. So I had to install on my Mac the VMware and on top of it install Windows and then on top of it install Office Excel. So let me switch to the um, Windows version of Excel and show you the forecast sheet feature. So this is my Windows version of Excel on my VMware. So I go into paste the data. Now uh, I'm going to use under data and then forecast sheet. This forecast method is capable of dealing with both trend and seasonality when we develop a forecast model for this time series. So in Excel, uh, it's appropriate to use the forecast sheet to produce forecast for this kind of data. So in order to use the forecast sheet, the time series data must be collected on a consistent interval. It can be either annually or quarterly or monthly and so on. And the spreadsheet must contain uh, two elements. One is the series with the dates or periods in the uh, time series. And the other one is the series with the corresponding time series values. Now that we have the data ready, we highlight the column C and D. So column C is what forecast sheet referred to as the timeline range. And the column D is the values range. 
So we're going to highlight these two columns and then we're going to click under data, forecast sheet. And so you can already see I have the four years existing data and it's trying to uh, forecast the next two years or eight sessions of data. If you click on the options, you can see uh, you can forecast start from. So we start from 16 because we have 1 through 16 are the historical data. So we're starting from the end of the historical data, which is 16 to forecast and then we uh, end at 24 which is eight quarters or two years and then the confidence interval we keep it at the default 95 percent and then under the seasonality we suggest using the detect automatically feature only to confirm a suspected seasonal pattern uh, you want to avoid using it to identify a pattern that does not actually reflect seasonality. That will result in a model that is overfit on observed time series data and will likely produce very inaccurate forecasts. So a forecast model with seasonality should only be fit when the modeler has a reason to suspect a specific seasonal pattern. So we prefer to set it manually and we know that this data is um, four quarters each year so we set it manually at four as the four quarters pattern and we want to include the forecast statistics and i'll explain the results a little bit later we have automatically detect the timeline range is the c column value range is the d column if not you can click it and define it for the field missing points using we have two options zeros and interpolation the reason is that forecast sheet allows for up to 30% of the values for the time series variable to be missing. So in this data set, the value of the sale for up to 30% of the 16 periods is four periods that could be missing. So the forecast sheet will still produce forecasts. So you can use the few missing points using option to select whether the missing value will be replaced with a zero were with the result of linearly interpolating existing value in the time series. So the linearly interpolating um, existing value, meaning that it will guess the missing value using the value before it and after it in a linear pattern. Next is aggregate duplicates using, you can choose average or account, the maximum by default is using the average. Then we are clicking the create button. Okay, so because I'm using VMware and my resolution isn't that great, I had to adjust this uh, figure that output it. So the result of forecast sheet will output to a new worksheet and as showing in here. So the period of time for the 16 time series observation and the forecast time periods are in the column A. So we have total of 24 periods, including 16 exist and eight forecasted time periods. We have the actual time series data for periods one to 16 in column B. And we have the forecast for period 6 to 20 in column C. We have the lower confidence bounds for the forecast for periods 16 to 20 in column D and the upper confidence bound over here in the column E. We have a line graph of the time series, forecast values, and forecast interval. So we can see that the red line here is the eight quarters or two years of forecasting data based upon this four years of sales. And we can see that the forecast trend actually preserved the seasonality. As we can see that the predicted quarter three has the lowest sales and the quarter four has the highest sales. So we can see that the forecast value is actually output from a Excel function forecast.ets. The first argument in this function specifies the period to be forecasted. So that's A18. 
which is period number 17 in here. And then the second argument specifies the time series data range upon which the forecast is based, which is B2 to B7. Those are the sales value from period 1 to period 16. And then the third argument uh, in the function is the timeline associated with the time series values, which is A2 to A17. And the value 4 indicates the length of the seasonal pattern. We talk about four quarters a pattern. The fifth argument addresses missing data. And the value of 1 means that any missing observations will be approximated as the average of the neighboring observations. Right, so that's when exactly we choose the interpolation for the how to handle in the missing data. And if the data has no missing observations, then the value of this argument doesn't matter. So argument four and five are optional. And the first three arguments, those are mandatory for this function. So now let's talk about the statistic matrix. The values of the three parameters or hyperparameters are alpha, beta, and gamma. So they're used in the hot winters additive seasonal smoothing model in cells H2 to H4. So these values are determined by the algorithm in um, forecast sheet. So what do they mean and what are they used for? So alpha is a smoothing factor for the level. It's also called a smoothing factor or smoothing coefficient. So this parameter controls the rate at which the influence of the observations at prior time steps decay exponentially. So alpha is often set to a value between 0 and 1. Large values of alpha means that the model pays attention mainly to the most recent past observations. And so the smaller values of alpha means more of the history is taken into account when making a prediction. The next is beta. Beta is another smoothing factor for the trend. It's an additional smoothing factor that is added to control the decay of the influence of the change in trend. So it can be a additive trend, which is double exponential smoothing with a linear trend, or multiplicative trend, which is double exponential smoothing with an exponential trend. Note that for longer range or multi-step forecasts, the trend may continue on an unrealistically length. So as such, it will be useful to dampen the trend over time. So what does dampening mean? Uh, it means reducing the size of the trend over future time steps down to a straight line. So there is no trend in the very far future. So for dampening, uh, damping coefficient pi is used to control the rate of dampening. Lastly, we have gamma. Gamma is simply the smoothing factor for the seasonality. Next, we have the MASE or the mean absolute scaled error. So MASE or mean absolute scale error, it compares the forecast error to naive forecast error. So if the MASE greater than one, then the forecast is considered inferior to a naive forecast. If it's less than one, then the forecast is considered superior to a naive forecast. So we would like to see the MASE to be less than one in this case, it's 0 0.22, which is less than 1, which means that this forecast is superior, is better than the naive forecast. SMAPE, or symmetric mean absolute percentage error, it's similar to the mean absolute percentage error, or MAPE, as we discussed in the other video uh, where I demonstrate the exponential smoothing. So both SMAPE and MAPE measure forecast error relative to the actual values. So you can use it to compare the forecasting with different units of measurements in different situations. 
So next, the MAE or mean absolute error. Basically, the error is the difference between the actual data and the predicted data. So the mean absolute just take the absolute value and then take the average of them. So lastly, RMSE or root mean square error is the square root of the MSE. So RMSE is a very common uh, matrix to measure the regression model's performance. And because it represents error, we want it to be as small as possible. A uh, rule of thumb is that a good model will generate RMSE that is less than 10% of the average of the dependent variable's value. So let's say our sales average is what? Let's take a look. Our sales average will be 6.38. So the 10% will be about 0 0.63. And then RMSE is less than 0 0.63. It's a 0 0.27. So we see that this is a pretty good model with a pretty high accuracy.